ever feel like market timing is, well, kind of a fool's game? Like it's yeah. all random and unpredictable. What if I told you there might be an underlying rhythm, a pattern to the chaos? There's a certain allure to that idea, isn't there? Finding order in what seems random. And mm. that's exactly what we're going to explore today using something called the Hurst Diamond Notation Pivots Indicator. Okay, that's a mouthful. Break it down for me. What makes this indicator so special? It's all about identifying those key turning points, you know, those moments when the market's direction shifts. Okay. Think of it as a roadmap highlighting potential changes in the market's rhythm. So less about predicting the future and more about recognizing a pattern as it emerges. Exactly. And the beauty of this indicator is that it does it visually, marking potential turning points on a chart with, you guessed it, diamonds. Diamonds, now that's got my attention. So I'm picturing my stock chart suddenly sparkling like a jewelry store window. <laughs> Not quite that flashy, but these diamonds, they act as signposts, alerting you to potential shifts in momentum. And here's where it gets even more interesting. They're color-coded. Color-coded diamonds. Okay, I'm officially intrigued. What do the different colors signify? They represent different cycle lengths. Okay. A green diamond might indicate a short-term cycle, maybe 5-10 days, while a red one could signal a more significant shift, perhaps 50-60 days. So it's not just about spotting a potential reversal. It's about understanding the potential time frame of that move. That's incredibly valuable information for a trader. Absolutely. And the Hearst Diamond Notation, it doesn't just look backward at historical patterns. Right. It uses that information to project potential future turning points as well. Wait, so it actually tries to anticipate where those diamonds might appear next. How does it do that? It analyzes historical data to identify the average time between those peaks and troughs, those diamond marked pivots. Let's say a stock you follow tends to reverse every 20 days. The indicator will flag that 20 day mark, giving you a heads up on a possible shift. That's fascinating. So it's not a crystal ball. Right. But it's like having a probabilistic roadmap of potential market turning points. Yeah. But how does this translate into real world trading decisions? Give me an example. Imagine you're watching a stock okay. that's been in a slump. Yeah. And suddenly, bam, a diamond appears at a recent low. That could be your signal, a potential bullish reversal. It's like the market is hinting, you know, at a change in direction. So I see that diamond back up the truck, buy all the shares, instant riches. Right. Hold your horses. It's not quite that simple. Remember, this is just one tool in your kit. Right. Think of the diamonds as points of interest, not guarantees. Right. Let's say you see other bullish signals aligning with that diamond. Maybe the price is bouncing off a support level right. or there's a surge in buying volume. That's when it gets really powerful, seeing those multiple layers of confirmation. Okay, so it's about connecting the docs, using this indicator in conjunction with your overall trading strategy. Exactly. What about when a stock is already in an uptrend? Can these diamonds tell you if the party is likely to continue? Absolutely. If you're consistently seeing those diamonds appear near higher highs and higher lows, that's a good sign the uptrend is still strong. Okay. The market is respecting those cycles, finding support at higher levels each time. It's like a rhythmic pulse, keeping the momentum going. I love that visual. But let's get down to brass tacks. Sure. How do we use these cycle lengths to actually time our entries and exits? Timing, as they say, is everything. Right, right. Let's say you're analyzing a stock. Okay. And you notice that the average cycle length, you know, between those diamond marked pivots is about 25 days. Okay. And let's say the last pivot marked by a diamond happened 15 days ago. That might suggest a potential shift in momentum could be brewing in about 10 days. So it's not about predicting the future with certainty, but rather having a sense of the probabilities, a potential time frame in mind. It's like having a heads up that a change in tempo might be coming. Precisely. Having that time frame in mind, it lets you prepare, fine tune your strategy. Maybe you tighten up your stop loss orders or start looking for those confirmation signals as you approach that potential turning point. This is starting to sound less like gambling and more like strategic planning, mm -hmm. which I have to admit makes me feel a lot more comfortable. But let's talk about the elephant in the room, risk management. Sure. Because no trading strategy is complete without it. How do these diamonds factor into managing risk? Remember how we talked about those peaks often acting as resistance levels and the troughs as support levels? Yeah. Those are your bread and butter for setting stop loss orders and take profit targets. Okay, walk me through it. Let's say I'm looking at a stock where a diamond just confirmed a recent low signaling a potential reversal. Okay. What would I do? In that scenario, you might enter a long position. Feeling confident that the market might be turning around, 
To manage your risk, you'd set a stop loss order just below that diamond marked trough. So if for whatever reason that reversal doesn't play out as expected and the stock dips further, my downside is limited. Exactly. Because that stop loss order should kick in. It's like a safety net, just in case. That's the idea. Right. And on the flip side, you can use those peaks, those diamond marked highs, as potential take profit levels. So if the stock rallies up toward a previous peak, a diamond marked high, that might be a good time to lock in some profits. You got it. It's all about understanding those cyclical rhythms, playing the probabilities, and always, always managing your risk. This is all incredibly fascinating, yeah. but I'm sure some listeners are thinking, okay, this sounds great in theory, but show me the proof. Does this actually work in the real world? Mm. I mean, O, for instance, would be great. Okay, sure. Let's rewind to late 2022, for example. Remember how volatile the market was back then? Oh, I remember. Not a time for the faint of heart. Exactly. But let's say you were using the Hearst Diamond notation during that time. You notice a diamond forming at a recent low on a stock you're following. And to top it off, the average cycle length suggests a potential reversal could be on the horizon. Okay, so we've got our diamond signal and the timing seems right. What's the next step? This is where those confirming indicators come in. Let's say you're also seeing a surge in buying volume or maybe a positive earnings report comes out. Yeah. These additional factors, coupled with the diamond, you know, it starts to paint a compelling picture. So it's not about relying solely on the diamonds, but rather using them as part of a holistic analysis. Precisely. It's about piecing together the puzzle. And in this scenario, let's say you decide to take the plunge and buy shares near that diamond marked low. Mm -hmm. You set your stop loss just below to manage your risk and then wait to see what happens. All right, don't keep me hanging. Did the market play along? Well, in this hypothetical example, yeah, it did. The stock rallied over the following weeks, just as those cycles suggested it might. And you, with your keen understanding of the Hearst Diamond notation, would have been well positioned to ride that wave. That's what I like to hear. It's all about finding those edges, those insights that can help you navigate the market more effectively. Right. And this feels like a powerful tool for doing just that. I agree. The market may seem chaotic at times, but tools like the Hearst diamond notation can help uncover those hidden rhythms, those recurring patterns that can inform your trading decisions. Absolutely. Knowledge is power, as they say, and this definitely feels like leveling up my understanding of market dynamics. Yeah. But before we wrap up, I have to ask about something you mentioned earlier. The idea that these cyclical principles, they might extend beyond just market prices. Right. That's a fascinating concept. Could you elaborate on that a bit more? Of course. Think about it. What if the same rhythms and cycles exist in other aspects of trading, or even life in general? Are there cycles in investor sentiment, news flow, even in our own decision-making processes? It's a captivating thought. It really is. It makes you wonder what other hidden patterns we might uncover if we just start looking for them. Well, I think you've given our listeners and me a lot to ponder today. This has been an incredibly insightful deep dive into the world of market cycles and the intriguing Hearst Diamond Notation. It's been my pleasure. And remember, the market might seem like this complex, unpredictable beast, but with the right tools and a little bit of insight, you might be surprised at the patterns you can uncover. Wise words to end on. Until next time, keep exploring, keep learning, and happy trading, everyone.